Hello there. Hope that you're all excited. We will learn many new things about design thinking and you will hear some interesting stories too. But before that, let me ask you a question. You know there is this word empathy? Do you know what it means? I'm sure you do. But let me just explain it so that all of us understand it in the same way. Empathy means understanding a person and understanding the person's pains and problems. Let me give you an example. Suppose you're in a bus and you are seated comfortably. An elderly lady gets into the bus from a stop and comes and stands near you. In all probability, you will get up and offer her your seat. By doing so, you are displaying empathy. You understand that it is difficult for the lady to stand, you understand her pain, and so you offer her your seat. Are you wondering what empathy has to do with design thinking? Well, it is the main principle of design thinking. The other principles are observation and user-centeredness. Wait, wait, are you thinking, oh my God, how boring? Again, some more principles. Don't write me off yet, please. I will not bore you with a lecture on these principles. You know what I will do? I will tell you some stories. So here is the first story. It is the year 2001 and the month is October. A new product is launched and the world is taken by surprise. The product is something that fits into your pocket and is set to change the way people store and play music. Can you guess what this product could be? I'm sure you would have guessed. Yes, it is the iPod. It has 50 GB of storage and was the size of the tape that went into a Walkman. And you could download an entire CD into the gadget within 10 seconds. Why was it such a success when it was launched? It was because Apple, the company, empathized with these people who love music and wanted their music to be with them all the time, wherever they go. This understanding of people's need is empathy. And when you design a product, keeping these very needs in mind, the product you create will definitely be user-centric. And that is the second principle of design thinking. User-centric means something that is centered around the user. And here is the second story. It was a rainy day in Bangalore. Ratan Tata, you know the head of the Tata group? He was travelling in his car when suddenly a scooter turned in front of his car and lost control. A family of four who were on the scooter fell on the pavement. Nobody got hurt, but this incident led Ratan Tata to think of making road travel safer for Indian families. And this is how the idea for the nano car was born. So, guys, can you all identify the principle of design thinking in this story? Yes, empathy, user-centeredness. And here is the third principle now. Observation. These very principles brought to the Indian roads a small car called nano that was affordable for the scooter-owning family. I hope you enjoyed these stories and here's one last story. And for this story, let us travel to Kenya in Africa because the story is set there. This is the story of Richard Turere. He was an 11 year old boy then and at this young age, he was responsible for taking care of his family's cattle. But very often lions from the neighboring grasslands would attack the cattle. One day, a small observation led him to design a solution for this problem. He had observed that lions were afraid of approaching the farm when someone was carrying a flashlight, you know, a torch. He used this observation to design a light. 
the light was wired to an old car battery which in turn was powered by a solar panel. This light flickered on and off and tricked the lions into believing that someone was moving around with a flashlight. So see, what a simple thing such an observation can do. It can spark creativity and innovation in a young boy. So here is the lesson for us. Let's agree to empathize and observe at all times, wherever we are. Who knows, we too may come up with a solution to some problem someday. And with that, I wind up for today.